Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And for today, we are going to be doing on the fly playoffs on the fly reaction again. My reaction to every game from the playoffs. We're also going to be looking at what Minnesota might be doing from now on in. Yeah, got an off season to for them for sure. Uh, this is all on the fly, one take, giver. No editing, no nothing, just give her. That's the way we do here at Pearl of Wisdom Industries. Uh, sub yourself up because I got some interesting trade talk coming up. New Jersey Devils look like they're pretty bullish to trade their second overall pick. And I normally would not would take that with a grain of salt. But honestly, this one sounds like it could be. And Vancouver, from what I'm gathering, from everything I'm hearing, I'm getting the feeling that they're looking to do not really a rebuild, rebuild, like burn it down rebuild, but continue in the rebuild mode like Benning was really supposed to do. And I could see guys like Besser and Miller moving on as they reform that organization the way they want to. I'm guessing, I'm going to take a lucky guess here from the defense out. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see. All right. Hit sub up, watch the Pearl of Wisdom show. You're going to like it. Steel Flyers All Sports Network as well. All right, let's look at the games. Bruins versus Hurricanes. And, I mean, it's pretty much next to impossible to beat the Bruins in their own barn. Let's just face it right now. Uh, that uh, that It's just jumping. The fans alone boost everybody's energy up. 10 times it was incredible to watch these Bruin fans uh and not only that I mean Brad Marchand already is is money he scored the first goal um Bergeron of course didn't score but they all looked like they were in the they were Carolina looked like okay we're not winning this game that's that's what it felt like to me like before even halfway through the game Boston Marshawn and all their players had this air about them like, yeah, we ain't losing this. We may lose in Carolina, but we ain't losing this. There's no way. And uh, they didn't. Uh, you got All of a sudden, you get depth scoring from Halla, Derek Horbert, Curtis Lazar. It is amazing. Like When you talk about energy and the importance of energy in hockey, it's amazing how much the guys hit it out of the park when you got a fan base like that that's rooting you on the way they were. There's a mystique, a magic about Boston in Boston. The other team could be better on paper. They could be deeper. They could have better goaltending. It doesn't seem to matter. It's, it's just they go on a whole new level. Everybody, the whole team goes on a whole new level when they're in Boston. Now, that being said for Carolina – some issues that I had here was Trocheck not having a shot on goal. I mean, I know you had some hits there, Troch, but in this situation, you got to be getting shots on goal. He's going to be a free agent at the end of this year. I'm hearing that they're not really a huge fan of signing him back. That's what I'm hearing. It's not a fact. I don't know. But if you're not getting shots on goal in a game like this, when you're okay, you're going in against Boston, you know it's going to be tough. It's almost impossible, actually to beat Boston in Boston. Uh, but you give your best effort. And I didn't see a be the best effort from some guy. Ajo. No shots on goal, Ajo? Sebastian Ajo? Man, oh, man. Now, Carolina, of course, they're going to build this same mystique, I think, as Boston has. And they're learning from Boston what it means and what it takes to have this aura where you are not going to beat us. And I, I imagine they're going to go into Carolina, win or lose, they're going to take from this a lot. Guys like Jarvis now, on the other hand, uh, he didn't have any, it's amazing, he didn't have any shots on goal, but I'll tell you what, now there, there's a difference. I noticed him, and I've noticed him all in every game. I, I, I still think it's not a great thing, but the kid is just a kid. 
it's a it's a little different. Svechnikov did get pot a couple, and you say you think shots and goal are not important. They are. You can't score without them, man. And it just seems that when people go into Bo- when teams go into Boston, that's what happens. Is their hands go, they they they're a foot. Um, they miss the net by a foot all of a sudden when that would have been on net. There's just something that gets them nervous, uptight, and uh, Carolina looked uptight and nervous. Great teams don't get like that. Look what Pittsburgh's doing in New York. Um, look what Boston. Well, we'll see what Boston does in Carolina. They're having their troubles there. But big games, great teams have better efforts than this. And uh, I, I'm not saying Carolina, Carolina won't be a great team. They have the pieces to be a great team. But there's a mentality that they just haven't grasped yet. We'll see how it goes. But now going uh, for Boston, you got uh, – look at Coyle, Smith. Look at all the shots. Lazar. Bergeron shooting, shooting, hitting the net, hitting the net, hitting the net. And having that extra man of that audience, uh, of the uh, fans there, it is electric in Boston. And it certainly just brings everybody up, gives all the players confidence and tears down the confidence of players of the opposition, obviously. Right. So tell me what you think, Carolina. You're going to go into your own bar now. Uh, you got it. You got. I think Carolina fans have something to start here, something to build as well. This isn't just about the players on the ice. You got to bring it. You got to bring it and show those Boston fans what it means to be a Carolina fan. We're going to build this mystique here in Raleigh. We're going to build this mystique, like the Boston mystique in Carolina. I want to see it. That's going to be interesting to see. Sub yourselves up, guys. I want to hear your comments in my comments. So sub yourself up to the YouTube channel. Uh, tell me what you think about your team, what happened, their performance, all of that, and going into Game 7 as well. Because uh, that's going to be one barn burner. I, I can't wait to see it. I'm going to be all over that game. <laughs> Was it 2.30 Saturday? I got clear in my schedule for that, I'll tell you that. All right. Lightning versus the Leafs. And... Uh, Man, here we go again with the Lightning. I mean, it, we've heard about it over and over again. I don't know if you haven't heard about it. You, I don't know how you couldn't have heard about it. But the Lightning don't lose back-to-back. They just don't lose back-to-back. And the fans here were fantastic as well. But really, the light. I, I thought the Maple Leafs, especially in the third period, controlled in overtime. They definitely controlled... The play. Definitely controlled the play. And uh, Tampa Bay just gets it done. That's what these great teams do, right? Even when they're when they're all back on their heels, you know, Vasilevsky, money goaltender, money goaltender. T- Toronto was throwing a lot of rubber at him in overtime. I'm thinking, oh, it looks like Toronto might put it, might get it right now before they even go back home. But Vasilevsky, would you? Was there anybody you would want in the net, other than I mean, Price is out now. Other than Vasilevsky in a situation like that, then Tampa Bay goes back. Point doesn't have a shot all game. His first shot on goal. I know he didn't have a point all game because I had him to shoot get two and a half, over two and a half shots on prop, and we didn't get it. But first shot on goal nails it. After Toronto had really controlled the play in overtime, as far as I was concerned, um, and then Campbell, you know, Campbell lets in that goal. Now you can say, "Well, okay, Campbell, it's not his fault, or whatever the case may be." But if anyone, a lot of those shots that went against Vasilevsky, if they would have went in, you would have been saying, "Well, it's not Vasilevsky's fault." That's the difference. In money time situations, Vasilevsky stops those pucks. That's the reason why Tampa Bay hasn't lost back-to-back in 17 straight. Vasilevsky was in every one of those games. There's a lot of tight games in there. There's a lot of close games. There's a lot of money saves that had to be made, and he makes them. So going back to Toronto now, you know Vasilevsky is going to be money. Is Campbell going to be money? This is the big thing. Toronto should win this. Toronto's at home. 
They've got their fans behind them. They should have full energy behind them. But is it going to happen? We'll see. Tell me what you think, Toronto fans. Are you? How sure are you of Campbell? How sure are you of your team now? They haven't won in, oh gosh, it's been a long, long time since they won a round. I personally think that Toronto just may get it done here. They did control the play in Tampa. They didn't give up. They, you know, couldn't get it past Vasilevsky. But I, I just think Tampa Bay is probably uh, a little taxed. They looked a little tired. And I just think Toronto might end up wanting it more. There's more on the line for Toronto. Tampa Bay's already won the Cups. Tampa Bay has had very little rest in between the last two Cup wins because of COVID and all that stuff like that. This is the time, Toronto. If you don't do it here, I don't know. I don't know. All right, next game. We're going to be talking about Minnesota. And uh, later, I'm going to go into some of the things that they might end up having to do in the off season now that they got out of it. So I'm going to go to the Oilers LA Kings and these, I'm an Oilers fan. And let me tell you, it's one of the most maddening things to watch to be an Oilers fan because their defense is poor. It's been poor all year. Their defensemen are not very good. And I get in arguments with Oilers fans about this all the time. Uh, there's a lot of home pumpers there. Duncan Keith, you know, it was a good move because it helped out Bouchard or whatever. The guy's terrible on the ice. He wasn't terrible, terrible. It, it's with, with Duncan Keith, it's a question of whether he's bad or really bad. And he was just bad. Not really bad last night. Um, Connor, of course, when it's money time. Uh, I, I was listening to Sirius Radio there the other day, or actually it was today, and it was Derek Roy. Oh, no, that's not. It wasn't Sirius Radio. It was another program. Derek Roy was, uh, he was a player for the Buffalo Sabres. He trained with McDavid, and he said he's one of the most competitive guys he's ever seen, and I, you know, that's, guys don't get as good as him, him and Crosby, without being like that. He pots the first one. Kane looked like a beast last night. Kane came out the game before Kane wasn't there, man. And if the Oilers are going to go far at all, Kane has to play like he did last night. He played amazing. He was in there in front of the net. He's never going to be great defensively. He's never going to, you know, all around game. But where he is great, he's amazing at when he's doing it. Sixth goal last night and, of course, got the overtime as well. He was engaged. He was going, he was, this was Kane. Like I was just talking about Boston. Kane looked like one of those guys that you're not winning tonight. You're just not winning tonight. That He gave off that mystique for the Edmonton Oilers. Um, just talked about Tyson Berry. He does have a blistering shot and he scored a goal. But I mean, he's still a bad, bad defensively. Going into LA, I thought LA did. Uh, I, I thought the Oilers played maybe the best game they played this series, and that includes the eight and two eight two win. Um, I think Quick just had kind of a bad night that night. Uh, L.A. played not too bad, but they couldn't keep up with the pace. When when Edmonton plays with pace for most of the game, they're going to beat a lot of teams, especially a team like L.A. Um, but if they don't, L.A. will beat you to a pulp. Um, I got mad respect for this LA team. Yeah, who Even if, if they win or don't win in Game 7, I had this go into 7 and I picked the Oilers, but it was kind of a homer pick. I wasn't sure. But this team has got heart. Heart. If the Oilers had as much heart throughout their lineup as LA does with Dano, Kaliev is playing with a lot of heart, Lazat. Uh, uh, Lemieux out there the city is playing with the most heart I've seen him in a long time. Like it's just it's infectious. It, it goes through this whole team. These guys give up their bodies. They they're fighting for every puck. They don't give up. It's 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 fun to watch. It makes you want to root for them, uh, especially with old Quick there 
playing, you know, some of the some of the best hockey he's played in quite a while. You like rooting for these old veterans, but win or lose, LA wins because if they're going to play like this in the future, as these young players get older and they add more, this there's a cup in here. I, I feel like there's a cup in LA before in Edmonton. Yeah, I'll post that to Facebook and see how it turns out for you guys. Tell me what you guys think of that. I know the Oilers fans are not going to be happy with that. Maybe they will. Maybe they agree. I don't know. LA fans, you should be happy because you were fantastic. Cody Harvey played. He got hurt. Ouch. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Okay. I didn't even notice that. Uh, all right. I'm going to go down to the Minnesota game because I'm going to talk about Minnesota and what Minnesota has to do in the off season. what I think that they're likely going to do in the off season, And I'm going to send it over to Minnesota fans, and they're going to be very unhappy with me. Uh, first, we'll look at the game. First, I'll look at the game real quick. I'm not going to talk much about I'll, I'll have much more to talk about with the Blues later. Great job. Depth, fantastic. Uh, they had some serious injuries on defense. Bennington, being, I mean, it's he, he, he's been everything you need. Way better than he was in the regular season. It's incredible to, to see a guy that can bring it in the playoffs like that, that really didn't do much in the regular season. Um, but it's the depth scoring. Do you know Wayne Gretzky picks St. Louis Blues to make the final? Wayne Gretzky. Uh, Tarasenko with five. This is a guy that wanted to get traded. God, everybody better be holding their breath. He still doesn't want to get traded out of St. Louis. He's been a beast. Um, but Minnesota just didn't have it. And they learned something here. Uh, they learned what it means to never give up. St. Louis comes in waves. And they're one of the best teams to win in spots where they shouldn't win. Most people were on Minnesota last night. I'm a professional handicapper. Most people were on Minnesota yesterday. I was on St. Louis. Not because I don't like Minnesota. I do like Minnesota. I love the fans of Minnesota. They're passionate. They love their players. Love their players. They don't like to see anybody leave. Minnesota fans are one of those people like, we don't want anybody from anywhere else. We just want our players to grow up in our organization and here. You start talking about trades and stuff. Like, they want Fiala signed. I don't think he's going to be, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but depth is so important. Minnesota had a lot of young players here that hadn't been there before. St. Louis, of course, had. They come at you in waves with their deep forward lines, and they don't let up. And Minnesota is going to take a lot of experience from this and probably be able to bring it maybe the next time. We'll see. But I wanted to look at what Minnesota is going to do now in the offseason. And uh, first I'll look at their depth chart. You got uh, Capriza, Hartman, Zuccarello. Let's face it. You need an upgrade at that center position somehow. I don't know how they're going to do it, and we'll look at that, but I think everybody knows it now. Hartman's just not the answer. Uh, Goudreau is getting better, but he's never going to be a number one. Uh, Eric Zanek is probably their number one right now. And ultimately, I don't think that's really ideal. It's not terrible, but they still need an upgrade up the middle. Um, and then... You know, Jacob Middleton was a nice addition, but things started to crumble on defense this year. And the biggest mistake, I think, I, I didn't even talk about it previous to this, but I think it was a big mistake that if they were going to go with uh, Flurry, they should have went with Flurry. Putting Talbot in, unless he was injured, let me know there in the comment section. Because now they're not, he, they're not even showing him here. I guess he's a free agent too. But it's an that's an awkward situation now in Minnesota. They didn't go with Talbot. They went with Flurry to the last game, which I think was sort of saving face. That you know we will give this a shot because Flurry's won the cups and all that. Now we're going to go to back to Talbot. So if we lose. It's not quite as awkward as we go into the next year. And Talbot knows that he wasn't the man. He wasn't the man. They went and got Flurry. They used Flurry instead of him. 
until the last game, which is a terrible thing to do. I wouldn't have did it. If you had him there, you keep him there. I think it was damage control to hope that they can keep Talbot happy. And I don't know if it's going to or not. Talbot's a pretty level-headed dude. I don't think he's going to get too offended by it. But in the back of his mind, I just think you have to be kind of wondering, what am I doing here, really? You know? He didn't have a bad year, really. I think it was tough. I agreed with the flurry move, actually, only in the sense that if they had any chance at all, they did. I did think Talbot probably wasn't going to bring him there. And Flurry has shown that he can bring. He brought a Vegas team there that shouldn't have been there. He brought Pittsburgh teams there. He's done it, done it, done it. And they thought maybe he could do it again because after this year, and this is what we're going to talk about here, it's tough, man. Uh, look at the cap space: three million, three point five million projected cap space next year and you've got mr fiala to sign uh dumba is making six and he's going to be a free agent i know everybody everybody in minnesota land is talking about we want dumba traded and keep fiala I, almost everybody i've heard do that i'm going to say right now i doubt it happens they have minnesota has has some sort of a deal with dumba they protected him all along the way through every expansion draft, they lost Tuck because of him. There's something about Dumba. I think they made a deal that he's not going to ask for too much money and they're going to sign him to a longer term deal. And I know if you do that, you can't sign Fiala. The truth is, you're going to get more for Fiala, anyways. And we all know the situation in Minnesota. You have this problem here Zach Parise and Ryan Suter deals for the next three years are going to be screwing up that cap space for a while. This team's going to need to get younger. Uh, they're going to need to hope their youth is able to come in and be the uh, catalyst for them. I think for the most part, this is a vision for two more years. Uh, that's what I think it is in Minnesota for the most part. If they catch lightning in the bottle and they happen to go on a run, that's great. But I think Fiala will be traded. I, I really do. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't, but I don't think Dumbo will be. And they've got young players that, that they got to see now. They have young players that they have to see if they're good enough. They got to keep on drafting well, keep their picks. Uh, Minnesota's pretty good at that. They're pretty good at bringing guys up along here. They got Marco Rossi. Hopefully he can get healthy. My gosh. He's a future number one. He, he When he was playing, he looked good in the AHL. Adam Beckham can take a spot next year. I think he's he didn't have a bad year. It might be that one year better, better to be one more year in the AHL. I'm not 100% sure. He's still pretty slight at 6'1". Um, Chaffee. These guys have got to get a good shot. Kalen Addison. I don't think he... There's really anything more for him to do in the AHL next year. And then you've got Carson Lambos and Ryan O'Rourke coming up on their defense here, which would make you think Dumba is going to go. I just, how much I've seen it, I don't know. They did sign Goligoski for $2 million. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, Minnesota fans. Maybe this is finally the year that they trade Dumba, they sign Fiala, and they let Carson Lambos and Kalen Addison get a good shot next year. And they keep on flying the way they are. But that being said, I don't see a number one unless Rossi comes in because they don't have any cap space. I don't see how they're going to get themselves a number one unless they let Fiala go and they find a way to get a number one center. I'm not even sure if it matters because with the lack of cap space they have and the position that they're in, they're really going to be hoping to do something in the playoffs rather than be a contender. So that's my take on Minnesota. I'm going to send that out to all the lands, all the Minnesota people out there, and you're going to slam me and tell me that, you know, I don't like Minnesota or something. Not true. I hope I'm wrong. I think Minnesota is a great hockey town. I think uh, I love Billy Guerin. I think Billy Guerin has done fantastic things there. I just think this is a team it's still building 
uh, from the Souter Parise era and they're building their new era and it's probably, you know, give it when, when those contracts are off and they have cap space, they want to be in a position where they're a powerhouse. I think that's what the thing Minnesota is doing there. All right. That's my full 42. Thanks for listening in everybody. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the games tonight. I will be doing my reaction video again tonight, and there will be frolic in the land. Sub up, everybody. Sub up. Okay, bye.